welcome to this late night edition of Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing a real tiny gem from the 1980s directed by Martin Scorsese called After Hours. After Hours is just a good awesome movie from the early 1980s directed by Martin Scorsese starring Griffin Dunn, Rosanna Arquette, fucking John Hurd, Linda Fiorentino, fucking Cheech and Chong, anybody you can think of is in this goddamn movie. Even Dick Miller's in this movie. What's it about? Starts out in New York City, Griffin Dunn's kind of like a nerdy office working motherfucker, and he's, the actual movie starts out, he's training Balky how to do some old, like some old ancient computer bullshit. Like, you won't believe how primitive this computer shit is, but he's teaching him how to do it. Next thing you know, he's going home for the day, he's sitting at home with his fucking cable box, pressing buttons, like, if you were fucking alive in the early 1980s, you remember the old ass cable box, you like, boop, 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 just click that shit all day. Like, not a remote control, just like a box with a big old cable come out of it and just had a row of buttons. You just click that shit to get the different stations. Anyway, so he's basically bored. He's living a boring fucking New York rat race fucking type of life. So that night, he goes out to have dinner in a fucking uh, diner and shit. He's reading a book, just kind of bored and shit. Next thing you know, fucking Rosanna Arquette, young Rosanna Arquette, looking nice and hot, fucking perky titties. Comes up, talking shit, fucking, hey, what's this book you're reading? You know, hits on him a little bit, gives him her phone number. He's like, hey, you know, cool, whatever. He's not thinking too much of it at the time. He goes home, back to his boring fucking apartment, and he's like pacing around. He's like, fuck it, man, I'm bored. Why not? I'll give this girl a call. Gives her a call. She's like, yeah, come on down, fucking down to Soho, whatever. They don't really say exactly where he is, but he has to go across the fucking city, get there, takes a cab ride. While well, I was taking a cab ride, and this is a crazy ass cab ride, man, fucking cab zooming all out and shit. Scorsese gets really fucking silly, man, starts speeding the film up, fucking, like, madcap, fucking, almost Benny Hill type shit. Griffin Dunn, he only got $20 on him, he takes out his wallet to fucking go play the cab or whatever, get ready to pay the cab. Fucking flies out the window, he ain't got no money, he gets to where he's going. Tells the cabbie, sorry, man, but the fucking money flew out the window and shit on fuck. Fucking cabbie peels off, leaves him there, so he's like, whatever, man. Goes up to the fucking apartment, go meet Rosanna Arquette. She's not there. Fucking her roommate's there. Crazy ass Linda Fiorentino with a real fucking little boy haircut, just like in the movie Gotcha. But she's even more like fucking slutty in this one. She's just wearing a bra and a leather mini skirt. She's making some weird paper mache sculpture, motherfuckers. <laughs> some real avant garde 1980s art. New York bullshit. So Griffin does like, this is a weird fucking scene, man. Like, when's she gonna come back? But he starts hanging out with Linda Fiorentino, starts giving her a back rub. And he's like, well, maybe, I, you know, I came down here to bang a girl. Maybe I can bang this girl. And just when, like, things start to seem like they're gonna get a little risque, all of a sudden Linda Fiorentino just fucking knocks out. You're like, oh, whatever. Rosanna Arquette shows up, so he's all right. He goes back in the bedroom with her. You know, she's like acting all weird and shit. She's like, all right, we can smoke a joint and shit, but I, you know, I'm gonna go take a shower and stuff. So, you know, she goes to take a shower, he starts snooping around, finds some burn cream. He's like, what happened, man? This girl got burned up, she got a burned up pussy. Like, what's going to happen? Just all kinds of crazy shit. But meanwhile, it's just dragging on, man. Like, this is all taking a lot longer than he thought. He's just trying to get some pussy, goddammit. He's checking his watch because he got to get up in the morning, go back to that fucking boring-ass job with Balky and shit. Finally, Rosanna Arquette comes back in a bathrobe and shit, you know, and she's like, I... Things are a little awkward, because, I mean, he just barely knows this girl, man. He's in an apartment with her. He's like, are we going to bang? Are we not going to bang? All of a sudden, she starts getting weird and emotional, just a real crazy, kooky type of girl. Next thing you know, she's like, let's go get some coffee. So he's like, all right, let's go get coffee. They go to the fucking diner. He's just like, man, fuck it. He started looking at the time. I got to fucking find a way home. I ain't got no money and shit. What the fuck am I going to do? Goes back with Rosanna Arquette. He, you know, he's like, should I bolt? Should I try to get this pussy? What's going to happen? Basically what happens, she starts cutting around and shit. Fuck it, she gives him some grass. He's like, this ain't even grass, is it? He starts getting pissed. He's like, fuck you, I'm getting the fuck out of her. Because she's a real dramatic type of girl. Like, basically he just was calling a distraction to, you know, fucking get the fuck out of there. Hurt her feelings, but he didn't give a shit. He had to get the fuck out of there. He runs out while she's crying and shit. It's like all this ruckus. He's like, man, what a fucking crazy wasted night, right? Like, fucking... Just weird waggy came down to get some pussy, but it, it wasn't going to work out, I guess. So he got to get the fuck home. So he storms out of the fucking apartment. He tries to jump on the subway. He ain't got the change. He ain't got the fare and shit because he ain't got no money. He gets stopped by a cop. He has to fucking get out of there and shit, run away. He fucking is, all that thing, you know, starts pouring rain. Everything this night's going wrong. I ain't going to go too much into it, but, you know, he's trying to find a way home, but there's crazy shit going on. He's stuck in this weird Soho for, like, neighborhood, and that's what Scorsese's great at, man, just really showing some dark. This shit looks scary, man. It looks like Escape from New York shit, like dark fucking streets with nobody on them. Next thing you know, fucking Cheech and Chong are riding around, robbing everybody. 
fucking just apartment for apartment. The neighborhood watches running around. They think it's Griffin Dunn because he fucking, you know, he's out on the street, like, trying to get out there and shit. So he's running from his life and all, all kinds of shit, man. It's just one of those movies where it's like a hellish night. It's really like a fucking fever dream, like your worst nightmare come true. Just being trapped somewhere, fuckers trying to chase you, running into all kinds of weird skeezy motherfuckers. The thing that's real interesting, the theme is he's constantly meeting women, Griffin Dunn is, who like want to bang him and shit. And it's real interesting because Griffin Dunn, I mean, he's not an ugly guy, but you know, you, you clear as tell it's a different era of film. But when it's make, it kind of got a snaggle tooth and some shit. But yet, all these women, man, they want fuck. Everybody wants some Griffin Dunn dick. It's just really surprising that Martin Scorsese made this fucking movie. He really went back to his roots. He really went back to like mini streets, taxi driver just running around the street shooting some shit real quick. The movie looks good though, even though it was a much lower budget movie than Martin Scorsese was used to doing at the time. He put his all into it. He didn't just sleepwalk through it. He put a little lot of passion. He was trying to rekindle like his younger filmmaking stuff. So as a movie for the type of movie After Hours is trying to be, just a great, quirky, independent you know, spirit type of comedy about a guy just on a misadventure in New York trying to get some pussy just ended up with a big fucking nightmare happening and shit. It don't get much more fun. It don't get much more interesting. It don't get much more fucking bizarre. It don't get much more fucking Martin Scorsese in New York than this. I gotta give After Hours a real good solid eight and a half out of ten. It's a lot of fucking fun. Picture and sound, this being a DVD, you think it's going to shit the bed, old movie and stuff. I gotta say, man, a lot of times these really nicely shot, simply shot movies from the 80s, for whatever reason, they translate to fucking DVD real well. It's got a really nice, clean, clear for DVD, you know, image, just really film-like, really nice looking. I gotta say, man, like, I was really shocked by how good it looked. It just looked like a nice film print on my TV, you know, it didn't look like some shitty old DVD fucking old ass movie. It looked really nice. The sound, they just rolling with some Dolby Digital Mono, but it sounds really clean, really clear. You know, I wasn't too distracted that it wasn't surround sound or whatever. I fucking enjoyed it. So picture and sound for a DVD release, man, you know, picture wise it couldn't have been much better and the sound was solid. I want to give it fucking 7 out of 10. Alright, on the special features here, they got some special features, this ain't no belly or bone shit, but it ain't exactly collector's edition either. They got the commentary by Griffin Dunn, director Mark Scorsese, producer, cinematographer, editor, but there is a caveat here. It's not a fucking uh, feature length commentary, it's only on selected scenes of the movie. So it's really weird how they did it, is you put it in, select the commentary, and then like they play the fucking scenes, and Mark Scorsese comes on, man, and I, it, it really is informative, even as short of a commentary as it is tells you what was going on in his career in 1983, how he's trying to make fucking Last Temptation of Christ and the studio fucked him over and all this shit happened, man. But, you know, he really wasn't, he said, fuck it, man, my big dream movie blew up. I'm going to get back on the streets in New York, film some shit, get raw and gritty, independent like I did in fucking Mean Streets. It really is a nice, insightful, like, short commentary as it is. It's only on a few, you know, scenes of the movie. But the interesting thing is, like, he'll do his commentary on a scene. You know, it in, and everybody else will jump on, and then I went in, and then like the disc will just automatically skip to the next scene of commentary. So you don't have to like wait and fast forward to the next scene he does commentary on. So it sucks it wasn't feature length, but it's good that they did that so you can get to the commentary parts real quick. I really like the documentary on here. It's about a 20 minute documentary. It has a little bit of interview footage with Mark Scorsese, but mostly with uh, fucking Griffin Dunn and the other producer because Griffin Dunn, he was that main actor but he actually produced the movie. He found a script from a young screenwriter and he was shopping around Hollywood trying to get some fuckers to make it. He got Tim Burton on board. Tim Burton was all excited and fucking was ready to, you know, to make it in his, his Tim Burton's first movie and shit. But then fucking Scorsese was like, got the script and he's like, wait, I changed my mind, man. I want to direct the shit. So, they didn't really shit can Tim Burton, they just told him like, hey man, Mark says he wants to make this, but we originally committed to you and all this shit. Tim Burton, this is, I'll tell you what man, Tim Burton gets a lot of shit, he might make some shitty movies with Johnny Depp, but he was cool man, he said, he actually said, he said, I don't want to get in the way of anything Mark Scorsese wants to do, I'm his fan and shit, let him have the movie. So Tim Burton went and fucked off, he didn't make After Hours, so he made Big Top, or not Big Top Pee Wee, just regular Pee Wee, Big Adventure. So yeah, it all worked out in the end for Tim Burton, but that's just a cool little Hollywood story, and that's what this documentary is good for me. Also, there's about eight minutes to lead the scenes, like, they're, they're a little letterbox, but it's not bad looking. They could have spiced the shit back in the movie if they wanted, 
but they didn't, whatever. I guess it was just extra, but there is some interesting shit in there. And last but not least, they have the theatrical trailer, which is cool, but don't watch the theatrical trailer beforehand because it gives some spoilers away about some fucking characters who die and shit. I don't want, you know, fucking have the movie swell. Special features, I'm going to give it 7 out of 10. So that's it for fucking After Hours, a, a great movie, a, you know, era of bygone cinema back in the day. Fucking you had to meet a girl and, and get her phone number, try to get some pussy. Now you just fucking meet them on the internet and then show up at their house and hope they ain't too fucking fat or whatever. But yeah, go back, fucking know your history, fucking, you know, get into some artist Scorsese shit.